Hey everybody, this is a lecture on impulse, which is closely related to momentum in kind of the same way that work is related to energy. So an impulse is really just a force applied over time to an object. And when you apply an impulse, when you push, over, push on an object over a period of time, what you change is the momentum of an object. You change the velocity vector, so you change the momentum. So that means that impulse is a vector because it's a force applied over time. Um, the units of impulse are going to be newtons times seconds. The units for force times the units times uh, the units of time. Units of force times the units of time. Equivalently, we could write that as kilogram meters per second. We, we don't often use a symbol for impulse, but when we do, we might use J for impulse. Because usually we use I for other things. Um, so we just go to the next letter. Here's our equation for impulse then. The impulse is equal to force times the time interval. And this is our impulse. What the impulse does is change the momentum. And the amount of impulse you have is equal to that change in momentum of the object. Impulse applied to an object equals the change in momentum. Um, here's a nice ultra slow motion GIF of a uh, of a golf ball being fired against a wall. Uh, and you can see, uh, well, if we were to see it in normal speed, it would just bounce off the wall and we wouldn't really see what happens. But when we look at it in slow-mo, we can see that the force is being applied over a period of time. The golf ball compresses and deforms while the force from that wall is being applied and it gets pushed back. So anytime there is a bounce, Anytime any object bounces around, this is probably what's happening, just at a much less significant scale. Um, so the equation before is actually the impulse momentum theorem. Impulse equals change in momentum. What it means is if an object has some momentum, and there's a force, oh, and it hits a wall, uh, it's going to apply a force to that wall, but that wall is going to apply an equal force back. The force applied times the time it's applied causes that object's momentum to change. Anytime there's a collision, anytime really there's any force, there's an impulse applied and a change in momentum, as long as our forces don't cancel. So let's do an example. In 1986, a NASA, a NASA flight specialist estimated that the Challenger crew compartment crashed into the Atlantic Ocean with a speed of 96 meters per second. It's about 200 miles an hour. The time of impact was 0 0.0488 seconds. Calculate the impulse and average force on the crew. The mass of the crew compartment was approximately 5,900 kilograms. So let's, I'm going to just write out our givens. Uh, well, we start, we hit the ocean with a speed of, which I'm going to call V initial. Actually, I'm going to call it U. Our impact speed is 96 meters per second. Well, the ship is going to crash into the ocean, and it's going to slow down. And our final speed is then just going to be 0 meters per second. We know the time of impact, which I'll call delta T, 0 0.0488 seconds. And we know the mass of our crew is 50, or our crew compartment is 5,900 kilograms. We're trying to find the impulse, and we're trying to find the average force. So we had our equation from before impulse is equal to force times time, but it's also equal to the change in momentum of whatever object is experiencing that impulse. Now we are given the momentum, but we're given the velocities and the mass so we can find the change in momentum. So our delta P is just going to be our mass times our change in velocity. So the impulse for our Challenger is going to be 5,900 kilograms times, well our final velocity is zero. Our initial velocity is 96 meters per second. So negative 96 times 5,900 
I get my impulse equal to negative 5.67 times 10 to the 5. And the units are newton seconds. That's also equal to my change in momentum. Um, okay, so there's our impulse. If we know our impulse, it's easy to find the average force because impulse is just equal to force times time. If we want to solve for force, divide both sides by time, we get force is equal to impulse over time. Another way to write this would be force is equal to change in momentum over time, which is just Newton's second law. So our impulse was negative 5.67 times 10 to the 5 Newton seconds. By the way, that negative sign just tells us the direction. We implicitly said down towards the Earth is positive when we chose u to be positive. Divided by our time, which is 0 0.0488 seconds. If we divide them out, we get a force of, it's negative, but that doesn't really matter, 1.16 times 10 to the 7 newtons. This is an incredibly large amount of force, and so everyone in that crew compartment was unfortunately killed uh, pretty instantly. That's an incredibly sad disaster. Uh, and again, the negative sign just tells us the direction of the force is up. If we hit the water, we hit it with some initial speed u, that means the force is going to be pushing up to slow us down. One more example. A 10 kilogram ball is dropped from a certain height. The collision between the object and the ground lasts 0 0.300 seconds. If the force of impact on the object is 250 newtons, and this force was enough to bring it to a complete stop, from what height was it dropped? So I'm, I'm going to think about this in terms of a diagram. We start by dropping an object. It hits the ground. But it hits the ground with some speed. Uh, it takes some time, however, for that object to actually come to a stop, and it's going to compress a little bit. And the final speed, which I'm going to write as v2, is equal to 0. The impact speed I'm going to write as v1. Um, and we don't know what that is. And our initial speed at the top, which I'm going to write as v0, is equal to 0. Um, so we're given that the force from the ground is 250 newtons, and the uh, time feels the force is 0 0.03 seconds. Force times time is impulse. So our impulse, while on the ground, is just equal to 250 newtons times 0 0.0300 seconds. Seven point five kilograms meters per second, or 7.5 newton seconds. So if we want to find our change in velocity, we can use impulse momentum theorem. Change in momentum is equal to impulse, so m delta v is equal to impulse. If we want to solve for delta v, we divide both sides by m, we get delta v is impulse, which is 7.5 kilograms meters per second over the mass, 10.0 kilograms, which means our 7.5 over 10 is just 0 0.75 meters per second. So since that, that's our change in velocity, and our final velocity is 0, this is the magnitude of our change, then that means v1 is 0 0.75 meters per second. So if I want to find the height that it's dropped from, I can use kinematics or conservation of uh, energy. I'm going to use conservation of energy just because I like that more. At the top, it has potential energy, mgh. And at the bottom, it just has kinetic energy, 1 half mv squared. The m's cancel. So if we want to solve for the height, 
you get g equals one half v squared over, or v is our final velocity, over, oops, divided by the wrong thing, uh, over g. So one half times 0 0.75 meters per second, all squared, over 9.81 meters per second squared. 0.5 times 0.75 squared divided by 9.81. So the height was only 0 0.0287 meters, or 2.87 centimeters. Not dropped from very high. But another little bit on momentum. From impulse momentum, we can see that a change in momentum or an impulse is equal to force times time. But if our force is changing, that doesn't work. However, if we get a function for force, the impulse is the area under a force time curve, also called an integral. So if we want to find the impulse from 0 to 3 seconds, the impulse is just going to be this area of a triangle here. So let's do an example uh, with a force time graph. The graph shows the variation of net force with time for a 0 0.400 kilogram object. The object starts at rest at t equals 0 seconds. Find the impulse on the object for the whole interval and the final speed of the object after 10 seconds. So we know that impulse is the area under the curve. So I'm going to break this down. I'm going to call this J1. This is going to be J2. This is going to be J3. The total area is going to be J1 plus 2 j2 plus j3, j4 over here would be 0 because the force is 0 at all times. So j1 is the area under the curve, so that's going to be 1 half base times height, 1 half times 2 seconds times 2 newtons. 2 times 2 is 4, divided by 2 is 2 um, newton seconds. j2 is going to be just base time side because it's a rectangle. It's 1, 2, 3 seconds. 3 seconds times 2 newtons equals 6 newton seconds. J3, it's a triangle, so 1 half base time side. 1 half. The base is 3 seconds. The height is 2 newtons. The impulse is 6 over 2, which is 3 newton seconds. So that means our total impulse is just the sum of them, 2 plus 6 plus 3 newton seconds, which is 11 newton seconds. If we want to find the final speed of the object, well, it starts from rest, so the final speed is just going to be the final, uh, the, the equal to the change in velocity. So we can use impulse is change in momentum, m delta v. So delta v is just impulse over, uh, over mass, which is 11 newton seconds over 0 0.400 kilograms. 11 over 0.4 gives us 27.5 meters per second. So in summary, impulse is a force applied over time and it's equal to the change in momentum of an object. That also means that impulse is the area under a force time graph. Impulse lets us analyze in particular situations in which there are impacts for very short periods of time. That's all. Hope that was helpful. Bye.